In today's episode, we're talking all about the Spring Boot Actuator. So the actuator is this really cool dependency that we're going to add to our project that's going to give us a bunch of different endpoints to kind of give us the status or be able to manage our application. And so what we're going to do today is just create a very simple project using IntelliJ and the Spring Initializer. We're going to create a web project that includes the actuator and the actuator docs, which is kind of cool. So we'll look through that as well. And then we'll look through the documentation and just show you all of the different endpoints that are available to help give you some information about your application. So with that, let's jump right in and we're going to create a new project. So we're using the Spring Initializer. We're using Java 8 here. I'm going to say com.therealdanvega. We'll call this actuator. And those all look good. We'll say next. Here we're going to include our web. So we want Spring MVC. Uh, we'll go down to ops and we're going to include the actuator and actuator docs. So the actuator is actually what gives us all of the endpoints. The docs is a nice little handy uh, endpoint slash docs that kind of tells us what each of the endpoints do. Um, and that's nice to have. So we'll click next. Uh, dev boot actuator. That looks good. We'll finish up. And then I'm going to go to the documentation here. And if we look over in the documentation, you'll see a bunch of different endpoints. And so what this is, is this is the actual endpoint. So if we go slash actuator, and then this description tells us what that is going to give us. So in that case, it's going to basically give us a discovery page for all other endpoints. Now I want you to pay attention to this last column too, where it says sensitive default. And you'll see a lot of these say true and only very few of them say false. And what this means is that by default, there's probably some sensitive information in there that you wouldn't want the outside world just being able to look at. So by default, uh, it's configured with Spring Security and you need to be a fully authenticated user. Now we're going to show you just a quick way around that if you're just in your local dev environment and you want to be able to have access to those. But by default, they're all going to be locked down. We'll hit the health one first because that is not locked down. So what we're going to do is actually go over here and look at our main application file. Um, nothing special going on here. We're just going to go ahead and run this and make sure that it starts up. And when it does, we'll go ahead and pop right back over to the browser. Uh, go to localhost 8080 and then we'll go show you that slash health endpoint. And really that's just going to give us some quick info about the uh, status of the application. Okay, so we're started up on 8080. I'm going to jump back over here. Again, if I refresh this, we're just going to get our default white label error page. But now I can go to slash health, and that is going to give us some information about our application. And this is not a lot, but it just says status equals up. So now before I said, remember these all these other ones. So uh, info is actually not secure by default, so we should be able to visit that as well. And that should give us some info. There's nothing in there right now, but we can go ahead and add information to that later. And then if we go to something like uh, beans, you know, that's going to have some sensitive info in there. So if we go to slash beans, uh, by default, you're going to get an unauthorized here, a status 401. So these are all the different um, endpoints that we can hit. And then if you look down here below, if you're using Spring MVC, these are also available. And because we added that actuator docs, um, these slash docs is available and it is not um, by default locked down. So we can go ahead and go there as well. So if we go there, now we have some more information about all of these endpoints. This is some really good documentation. So it tells you all about um, the Spring Boot actuator endpoint. So if we want to see what does Beans actually give us, <coughs> It'll say this endpoint is a report on the Spring Boot application context. It lists all the beans in the context and their dependencies de detailing the names and concrete classes of each bean. And then it gives you a nice little example of a curl request, an HTTP request, and what the response looks like. 
So this is really nice to have and you can get that just by including that actuator docs dependency. So now let's go back to our application and let's just say that in um, our local de development environment, we didn't want everything locked down. Obviously, we, you know, there are times when we're writing applications locally where we need to see what that, uh, what the slash beans endpoint returns so we can see the different beans that are in our app. So there is actually a um, setting here that we can change. So management.security.enabled is by default true. So what we can do is just turn this off. So now if I go ahead and rerun our application, we should be able to go to any endpoint, no matter what the security is for that endpoint. Because we've basically said as an application wide, uh, I don't want to enable security for my management endpoints. Now again, this is not something you wanna do in production, so this would be a development only thing. So now if we go to slash beans, we should get a list of beans in our application, and we do. By the way, I'm just using some kind of uh, Chrome plugin here to make the JSON look readable and pretty. Uh, pretty. Um, I'll go ahead and include that in the links, but I think it's just, uh, yeah, I can't even remember what this is, but it's, oh, JSON Viewer, that's what it's called. So JSON Viewer is the Chrome extension, and it, it just makes the JSON view a little bit easier to see in the browser. So we did that, um, and now we can kind of hit any of the uh, endpoints that we need. Also, if we go ahead and look back at our docs, there's uh, one pretty cool endpoint, and that is not in here, is it? Nope. Let's go back to the documentation. Here's one here, shutdown, and it allows us to go ahead and shut down the application. And this is not enabled by default at all. You actually have to enable this one. So if we go over here, we can go to endpoints dot, and let's say shutdown. So by default, that's not enabled. So if we wanted to, we can go ahead and shut down the application just by hitting the slash shutdown uh, endpoint. Now, obviously that's something you don't want in production either. Um, we can go ahead and customize our endpoints too. So let's say we wanna customize our endpoints. What if we wanted the um, beans, just the beans one? So let's say for instance, we left this as it was. And so basically anything that had security on it, we would not be able to hit in production. But let's just say just the beans endpoint, we wanted to be able to hit that. We can actually say sensitive equals false just for that particular endpoint and make that one available. We can also give it a different ID. Maybe we don't want people to access it from beans. Maybe we wanna have it spring beans or something. So what we can do here is endpoints.beans.id. So now what this is is uh, this is going to be the name, the endpoint that we're going to hit. So again, there's ways to customize each of the beans. There's a way to customize security. And what we didn't get into today was there is way to, ways to add your own custom endpoints. Uh, so I hope this was helpful. Just a little bit of information about the actuator. It can be a great tool for both local development and giving you information in other environments as well. Uh, if you like this video, please let me know below. Hit that thumbs up for me. Subscribe to this channel. And please let me know what, you, what troubles you guys are facing in your Spring app so I could uh, keep putting some content out there that, that you guys are going to enjoy. Uh, with that, I think we're in there, and I hope you guys have a great day.